The Honorable Court is now adjourned until Thursday, the 10th day of December at 12 o'clock. Good afternoon. The front two and the spare are all right, but the left rear one is causing me great anxiety. Switched mine. If I don't get another year out of them, I shall be very disappointed. You know, that grandson of mine is the most unusual infant. At five weeks, he holds up his head without support. Here, I'll show you a snapshot. Goodbye, Grant. Have a good vacation. Happy holiday, Josephus. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Justice? Well, uh, could we have a word with you, Justice Grant? Just a few questions. I stopped answering questions when court recessed about three minutes ago. What do you know about Come in, come in. Here we go. Well, gentlemen, Justice Grant, we understand you declined to preside at the Danville investigation. There's some speculation as to your reasons. Well, there needn't be. I've had a long, hard year. I'm tired. I'm going hunting. Miss Gilbert, would you put this in my bag, please? The Gazette referred to you last week as a terrible tempered Justice Grant. How do you feel about that? I'm flattered. <laughs> and uh, this too, Miss Gilbert. Uh, where are you going for your hunting? Well, there are plenty of ducks and no reporters. Oh. <laughs> when are you leaving? A moment after you do. Good day, sir. Miss Gilbert, what is this nonsense? What does this resignation mean? I think it's obvious, sir. If it were obvious, I wouldn't ask the question, would I? Justice Grant, I've been with you for two years, and not once during that time have you expressed satisfaction with my work. Miss Gilbert, you can learn more law here in a week than you can anywhere else in a year. That's all that should interest you. I don't feel that I have to constantly remind you that you're a brilliant young woman and that you have a fine future. Now, if there isn't anything else, can I go? Oh, uh, you wanted to look over the Hale and Tryon opinion, sir. They won't be back from the printer till next week. Oh, yes, they'll need some revision. <laughs> but I don't want to hang around here. Perhaps I can bring them up to you at Crownport, sir. That'd be fine. No, no, no. You need a vacation, too, from me. I don't mind at all. Miss Gilbert, are you heaping coals of fire on my head? I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Oh, I'll wire you before I come. Thank you. And Miss Gilbert. Yes, sir? No one must know where I'm going. No one. I want to get away from courtrooms investigations, lawyers, black robes, everything. Everything but ducks. Hundreds and hundreds of beautiful ducks. Hey, you! Wait a minute. I'm Orrin Todd, game inspector. Let's see your license. Yeah, just like I thought. Stranger in town, ain't you? This license ain't legal. Well, I just bought it yesterday at the state capitol. Yeah, I know, mister, but this is Crownport, and you gotta have a Crownport stamp on there. Well, I didn't know that. I'll get one tomorrow. Yeah, but it ain't gonna do you any good today. You know, I, I could haul you into court and let the judge slap a fine on you. But to save wear and tear on my tires, suppose I sell you one right here. It only cost you five bucks. You know, the five bucks is just for the stamp. I usually get a little something for my trouble, too. Well, you don't understand. I'm giving you a break, brother. Yeah, I never pay off twice, brother. Come on. Well, well look, let me explain it to you. Your 
Honor, it's not as though my client were trying to evade his financial obligations. Tom Cooney has been a member of this community for many years. And in all that time, his honesty and his responsibility has never been questioned. Now, he intends to make good the payments on these plows, but he's been sick, unable to work. Now, if the court could just grant him an extension... The law doesn't recognize good intentions. I shouldn't have to remind you of that, Mr. Adams. You're supposed to be a lawyer. But, Your Honor, am I not... Am I not justified in asking the court's indulgence in this case? If you take Tom Cooney's farm tools away from him, you take away his only means of earning a living. Mr. Adams, this is a court of law, not an employment agency. Tom Cooney signed an agreement with Vincent Blackston of the Crown Port Auto and Supply Company. This agreement stated if he missed a payment on those plows, Mr. Blackston could take them back. Is that right, Mr. Cooney? Well, uh, yes, Your Honor, but... All right, Counselor. <clears throat> Judgment against Thomas Cooney. But it, it was just one payment. If, if you'd give me a chance to... I don't care whether you say it's fair or not. It ain't. Get him out of here. Come on, Tom. This isn't gonna help. I know it ain't gonna help. Nothing's gonna help in a town like this. Officer. Oh, Come on. Let's go on me. Come on. Looks like you just lost yourself another vote, fellow. Come on. Oh, it ain't right. I know it ain't right. Crown Port versus Joe Grant. Step up, Joe Grant. Name? Joe Grant. Mm, shooting ducks without a Crown Port permit. I didn't get a chance to shoot. You were going to. Of course I was, you fool. That's why I bought a state license. We also require a Crown Port license, Mr. Grant. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. Hundred dollars or thirty days. Which one of you gentlemen do I pay? The clerk. Should have bought it for me in the first place. Save yourself a lot of dough. I assume that this hundred dollars will permit me to resume my hunting without further interference. Your assumption is wrong. You still need a Crown Port stamp. And an officer enforcing the law is not interfering, Mr. Grant. As a judge, I advise you to be careful of your words. Next case. Crown Port versus Burton Lyon. Step up, Burton Lyon. Hi, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry it turned out that way. Guess that's the only way it could have turned out. No, I thought we had a chance, but I guess I should have known. What are you gonna do now? Farm's no good to me without the tools to work it. Guess I'll lose it. Bank will start yelling for its money pretty soon. You know, Bill, Sometimes it's just more than a man can stand. I got to think of something to do. If I could only... Yeah, I know, Tom, I know. Look, why don't you come by the office later on? We'll talk about it, huh? Tom Cooney lost his case. Yeah. He'll probably lose his farm now, too. It's a shame. You know, Homer, that's what I like about the fellows around your shop. They enjoy the good things of life. Like a guy who can't meet his mortgage or a poor farmer getting ripped out of his plows. Maybe a Cooney had a real sharp lawyer. Maybe if we had a bank that'd stand an honest man credit or a judge that'd give him a break. Talk like that isn't going to get you any votes, Adams. If I could afford a 50 cent cigar, I could get yours. The shave. Sure, mister. Stranger in town? Yeah. Can't mean to stay long? Long enough to get a shave. <laughs> Great little town, isn't it, old timer? Yeah. yeah, Judge Hartley really gave you a welcome, didn't he? And our constable, Oren Todds, that's, uh, that's Homer's cousin. Uh, he's all law and order. Regular minute man, isn't he, Homer? Uh, how many minutes did it take before he tried to shake you down? It's a shame. Ever notice how a fellow who can't make a living in a town always tries to run it down? Hmm. You know, Mr. Uh, Grant, isn't it? 
Yeah. Uh, Mr. Grant, it might be fun to bust up one of the constable's little rackets. How about being a guinea pig? Let me turn this into a test case. Mr. Lane, a case this analyst chaser wouldn't take. There was two bucks to vote in it for him. How's it, boys? How's it, Mr. Mr. Mayor? Uh, much of a wait, Homer? Wait in a minute, Mr. Mayor. Hello there, my worthy opponent. I'm sorry about Tom Cooney. I hope he doesn't go to pieces over this. Well, he's really got something to go to pieces over. You know, it's a funny thing about some fellas. No matter where you put them, everything goes wrong for them. Hiya, Tom. You looking for me? I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Look, Tom, Mr. Mayor, I... If there's anything I can do for you, if you're in need of a little ready cash or something... I don't want charity. I, I, I just can't can change the law, Tom. You're the mayor. You... But I'm not a nursemaid to every man in town who can't take care of himself. Well, all right, Cooney, that's enough. Now beat it. Keep your hands off. Let him alone, Blackson. No, oh. no. This is all my fault. I wish you hadn't had to do that, Benny. Ah, he's had it coming to him for a long time. That boy is turning into an awful radical. You could tell that by the speech he made, except in the nomination. Well, that kind of talk is never going to make a mayor a crown for it. Well, it's too bad. Nothing I'd like better than to see some bright young fella come along who could take my place. But Bill Adams... Take a man to fill your shoes, Mr. Mayor. Ned Darrow dropped in this morning. He said to give you his regards. What's my bill? Just a shave? Yeah. Fifty cents. Hey, mister, I said fifty cents, not a quarter. Guess you made a mistake, friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made the mistake. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong customer that time, Homer. <laughs> First fellow in ten years ever flipped a bash on me. Columbia, a square rig four master. Nice work. Mm. Oh, and here's a nice one. This is a barkentine. Former square rig, the other mast fore and aft rig. Rather unusual. For sale? Oh, no, no, no. No, they're not that good. It's only a hobby, just, just for fun. I see you're running for mayor. Uh, yeah. Sort of a hobby, too, just for fun? No, not quite. Uh, Mayor Coniston, you saw him in the barber shop. Oh, he and his boys have been running this town for a long time. Make it pretty tough for anybody who comes up against them. Yes, I gathered as much. Well, a lot of people have been getting tired of it. I haven't much time myself. The army's going to grab me in a couple of months, but I thought I might at least get the ball rolling and for once give him a fight. But not too much of a fight. Something you want to see me about, Mr. Grant? In the barbershop, Mr. Adams, you mentioned the fact that you might like to make a test case of my fine. Were you serious? Yes. Yes, I think you've got a case. You do? How would you go about it? Well, we'd... Uh... Of course, the law requires a stamp. I didn't have one. No, no, but I think I could work out an appeal. An appeal? On what grounds? Was the fine illegal? Oh, no, no. They had a right to fine you. The fact that I was unfamiliar with the law? Oh, no, that's no excuse, obviously. Obviously. Then what would you base your appeal on, Mr. Adams? The fact that it's Tuesday and the sun is shining? Look, I haven't had much time to give it thought, but I can figure out an angle. There must be one lying around somewhere. Oh, yes, I'm sure there is. 
In the meanwhile, you can always make a living as a carpenter. Hiya, Bill. Oh, you're busy? No, Charlie, come on in. Mr. Grant, Charlie Craig, my campaign manager. How do you do, sir? Hi. Any new votes, Charlie? About enough to fill a dog's ear. Say, I just heard about Tom Cooney. Yeah, he's taking it pretty hard. I signed the same kind of note he did, so it don't look so good for that tractor of mine, either. You couldn't get me a couple of weeks postponement, could you? Well, I'll try, Charlie, but there's no use appealing to Blackston, not with the way he's got his business set up. His hopping on my tail wouldn't burn me if I hadn't had so much trouble with that tractor. Every time I needed a spare part, I had to send for it myself. Blackston never carried them in stock. Did, uh, did Blackston promise you such service? Well, no, there's nothing in the contract about providing service. Has Blackston lived up to all his legal obligations as a seller of the tractor? Well, sir, you, you sound like a lawyer yourself, Mr. Grant. <laughs> yes, well, I was about 20 years ago. Well, maybe you could give Bill here a pointer or two. Anyway, I'm glad to have met you. Be seeing you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going out and see if I can't agitate a few votes for you. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Grant, since you have some knowledge of the law, you've probably decided there's nothing much I can do for you. Well, uh, what about Craig? What are you going to do about him? What can I do for him? With Hockley on the bench, you saw what happened to Tom Cooney. You can't blame that on Judge Hockley. You went into that courtroom without a defense. That's why you got whipped. Well, then I guess I'll get whipped again. I guess you will. You're not much of a fighter, are you, Mr. Adams? Except in barbershop brawls. Oh, stop it. You can't fight brass knuckles with spitballs. The trick in this town is either to play the game their way, and I haven't the stomach for that, or to be as smart as they are. The trick, Mr. Adams, is to be smarter. Well, does that wind up your business? Or are you going to stay and give me the first five lessons in how to win friends and influence judges? No, Mr. Adams, I'm not. Those lessons have been written, and very well written, in books like this and all the others. And somewhere in one of them, there's a lesson mentioning that in any transaction between a seller and a buyer, there are laws governing the behavior of both parties. But I doubt if you can keep afloat long enough to find it. You know, Mr. Adams, I've seen you in action now as a lawyer, as a candidate for mayor, and as a shipbuilder. And if you'll take my advice, you'll stick to shipbuilding. There's a great future in it for lawyers. in like this, but I think I found it. Yes, yes, that covers it. You said you hadn't practiced law for 20 years. Imagine remembering a thing like that. <laughs> have, uh, have you had dinner, Mr. Adams? Uh, no, thanks, not hungry. I, I think this will cover it. it. It should work, but I've been battered down by those guys so often, I guess I haven't too much confidence. How long have you lived in Crown Point, Mr. Adams? Uh, 28 years with time off for college and law school. Mm -hmm. Never established residence in any other state? No. You're sure of that? Well, of course. Well, we, we went to Mexico for a few months when I was seven, but... Did you file an income tax return for 1939 and 40? Well, sure. I didn't pay anything in 1940. I didn't earn enough, but I, I filed a return. And your figures were honest, correct, and would bear investigation. What? Why, of course they were. No, you're getting nervous, Mr. Adams. I'm not nervous. I'm oh, merely yes, trying... Yes, yes, you are. You're flustered. You're raising your voice. Well, why shouldn't I raise my voice? You've as good as accused me of falsifying my income tax. I've accused you of nothing, Mr. Adams. Now, look, I don't know what you have on there, but I want to yes, tell you... Good. Take a look. It's, uh, it's, it's an old trick that Justice Brandeis used to play. I, uh, I read about it in Collier's once. You see, it's an unfortunate fact, Mr. Adams, that every man, even you and I, has done something that he doesn't want anybody to know about. Now, if you can make him think that you're holding in your hand the skeleton in his closet... You've got him. Well, let's say at least you've got him squirming, nervous, worried, as you were. But if that man happens to have a really guilty conscience... Your full name is...
is Vincent Z. Blackston? Yeah. Tell me, Mr. Blackston, what does the Z stand for? Do I have to answer that, Your Honor? What can be your objection? Surely you have nothing to hide. Well, the Z... It... Well, the Z stands for Zephyr. It's a family name. Zephyr? Uh, means a little wind, I believe. Quiet. <laughs> Mr. Blackson, you're the owner and manager of the Crownport Auto and Supply Company? Yes. The, uh, the sole owner? Uh, why, sure, of course. No silent partners? No. Uh, well, of course, there are people. Oh, then you're not the sole owner. I didn't say that. I just it said... It sounds very strange to me, Mr. Blackson. You don't know whether you own your own business or not. I object. That question is irrelevant, immaterial, and calculated to confuse the witness. Objection sustained. Counselor will restrict himself to the facts bearing on this case. Hey, Mr. Blackston, your company sells most of the used cars and tractors in this town. Almost a monopoly, isn't it? I do the most business because I sell my stock at the lowest prices. That's not monopoly. That's... That's the American way of life. Now tell me, Mr. Blackston. Carry spare parts for your customers? Sure. Hmm. Do you have in stock at this moment piston rings for the 1938 tractors you sold in this town? Mm. Well, Mr. Blackston? Well, no, I don't. Oh, then you don't carry all the spare parts your customers might need. Well, I can always get them if they need them. Yes, but sometimes your customers have to wait. Sure, it takes two weeks. If I ain't got them, how can they have them? An intelligent answer, Mr. Blackston, and an honest one. One which will require the court to enter judgment against you in this case. Will Counselor explain that statement? Certainly, Your Honor. Motor Vehicle Laws, 1919, Chapter 174, Section 52. The sale of any automobile or any other automotive vehicle is void unless the dealer carries in stock at all times and on demand parts that may be needed to repair the particular make of vehicle. Will you let me see that reference? <sighs> Counselor would seem to be correct. You put it over, Bill. Say, this will take care of Tom Cooney, too. You're telling me. I, I, I thought you were going hunting. <laughs> well, all the ducks are inside today. <laughs> I see you winged a couple yourself. Oh, of course, it's nothing really big. Oh, who am I kidding? I, I'm so tickled, I feel like a combination of Superman and a, a member of the Supreme Court. <laughs> mm. Really, I, I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Grant. Oh, no need to, my boy. First time I've enjoyed a courtroom in hey, years. Hey, thank you, fella. <laughs> You know what this stuff is? No, Mr. Grant, he wouldn't. William, this is American money. Good old folding money. You know what you can do with this stuff? You can buy things that you need. You get it? Yeah, but what I don't get is where you got it. Well, seeing Blackson get trim warms some hearts and unloosen a couple of purse strings. The boys have kicked in for your campaign fund. You know what we're going to do with this beautiful stuff? We're going to get some posters printed. Great big ones. The kind that look you right straight in the eye and follow you around. <laughs> Why get frightened? So Adams does win one rotten little case. Do you know what that case cost me? You can afford it. If it had happened to your hotel, Roscoe, you'd scream like a stuck pig. Stop it, stop it. Seriously, Jim, you don't see Adams as real competition. Well, as things stand now, no. But if a lot of people start thinking of Bill Adams as the people's champion, well... Jim, there was nothing else I could do. I can give you boys the edge when it's a question of interpretation, but not when the law's right there in black and white. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Judge. It's just something to start thinking about, that's all. You think we'll have trouble? 
Well, now look, boys. On second thought, we may be getting all steamed up for nothing. Yeah. But suppose he opens a lot of old cases, like Tom Cooney's. I think you've got something there, Zeppa. We'll just have to show the boy that he's wrong. should try to scoop some of that up. Uh, no, I guess not, huh? Well, uh, everything seems to be under control. But... Would it be all right with you if we went to your car now? The car? Oh, no. No, yes. Right here. Sorry to get off to such a bad start. I'm not always so clumsy. Oh, my hat! Oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. this morning do some hunting. He ought to be back soon. I was going to drive you around the town, but uh, I guess you want to get cleaned up now. Yes, I think I will. Well, I'll take you straight to the hotel. You are running for mayor? Mm-hmm. Surprised? That's putting it very mildly, Mr. Adams. Well, make the most of it, lady, because that's likely to be the only surprise you'll get in this town. Who's the girl with Adams? Don't know. What difference does it make? I'd like a room, please, by the day. No baggage? Well, she's just here. I don't register women without baggage in my hotel. Henry, 
Show this lady out. But you don't understand. Yes, I do. Why, you... Uh, please, Mr. Adams, let me explain. I, I Come on, sister, beat it. Take your hands off her. Oh, yeah? in the face, mister. Oh, but officer. Hey, officer! Hey, sergeant! Sergeant, I want to use that phone! Will you please keep quiet, your honor? They're just trying to get us out of here, you know. Why didn't you think of that before you got us in? Look, I'm very sorry this happened, but it isn't my fault. I suppose I started the fight. Mm. You sure did all right once it got going. Ho, ho, ho! What a gal! And what a wallop! Yeah, Miss G, you're really some scrapper. Say, hey, Roscoe Swade asked me to call you, Judge. We've got Bill Adams in here with a dame, assault and battery. How long do you want us to hold him here? Oh, just let them stew for a while, Sergeant. Uh, Adams will probably want to get in touch with me. And uh, oh, oh, he does, huh? Well, I'm out of town. You can't reach me anywhere. That's right. Overnight. <laughs>